Hello, I hope you're all doing well today. Here it's uh, not too hot, but it's like 80% humidity. It feels fucking gross. I swear in the five, five, first five seconds. Eh? I wanted to talk about IP game. And I know this was a subject of a of, of the of, uh, Friday Night Show stream, like a, some rando RPG stream on uh, last Friday, but I wasn't on. And... I had stuff to say about IP, IP games, so I want to talk about it. And Max also took in a direction that it's not necessarily the one I would have thought, I would have taken. Like, you want to talk specifically about taking an IP you like and adapting. I didn't watch the show, so go watch it for yourself if you want to know what they talked about. But I did talk about IP game quite a bit recently. I, I did a video about Zoro, which is an IP. I did a video about The Witcher, two video about The Witcher, actually. And now I'm reading Dark Soul, and I've been talking a bit on stream. I'm probably going to make a video about uh, about it next week, probably. Probably next week I'm going to make a video dedicated to Dark Soul. But, uh, oh, hello, uh, Justin. My magnificence has arrived. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you for joining, magnificent Justin. So I did talk about IP games, and it's not something that I planned to do. It just it just happened like that. I wanted to do a little more how to video to uh, bolster a bit my uh, how to playlist. So so that that's what happened during August, I, during July, I guess. Hello, Angar, and hello, the crafting gamer. And so the first question I want to ask is, why would you play an IP game? So of course, like there's a thing like, well, maybe you like an IP and you want more of it, more story of it. There's a advantage to an IP game, like he, like I mentioned before, like a, if if you and the player are familiar with an IP world, it can do a lot of the heavy lifting for you. You got a world to explore to it, and if the players are are, are well versed in ip then there's a lot of questions that are resolved you know you have to uh so it's important to pick an ip that both the gm and the players know and it's also important to have like people that are not going to make it a competition about who has the more in-depth knowledge of the ip it's something that uh this is something that can be very like a problem with certain ip like the Star Trek guys, you know, those can be uh, like having a Star Trek IP game can be fucking awful because Star Trek nerds are very deep into the lore. And then if you do something that is non canon or go against like what is canon, then you know, you have to avoid like or in your session zero, make an agreement like that, like that. You know, this is our version of it, what we make. You know, if the GM says something that goes against the lore, uh, don't go all autistic about it. Hello, uh, Guardian of the Rune. Nice seeing you. So, that's, um, in my opinion, that's the big advantage of the of playing an IP game. That's something I say often time. Like, if you want to have an efficient game prep, either take something from the real world and just change one thing, and then consider the implication of that thing that you change, or, or use an IP that the players are familiar with. Because you don't want to, you don't want to have to do uh, exposition drop. You know, you don't have to like those big. Oh, in this setting, that's is how umbrella work, and the rain goes from the ground to the sky. And you know, like you don't want to like spend your waste your time doing that at the gaming table. You know, like you're there to tell a story about characters, hopefully. So that's the character should be the focus, should be the start of the show, not the world, not the setting. And there's our IP that are not good for a game. If you go in a in a if you want to do a game, and that's again like this way you do it, but like no IP are really off limit. If you want to do like a but if you want to do like a if you want to use an IP where there's already such a big story that has been told in that story, like um, I like Dune a lot. But I wouldn't game in, in the world of Dune because everything the player will do kind of be in the shadow of Paul Moadim. 
or pull at 3Ds. You know what I mean? You got like this big character that overshadow everything you can do. Like you, you can say like, and what else is there to do in that world? You know, or you're going to play the house and then you're just going to do your little machination or there's this big story in the background. I want to see that story. That story seems interesting. Why am I fucking doing that? What I'm doing like trading spice and trying to do, you know, there's those big owls there. I'm not one of them, you know? Same thing with the... Uh, a song of ice and fire this is the same thing as well like there's a little more room there with the world of the five kings because you could have more impact on the war if you accept that you're going to go away from it from uh that, that the plot of your story is gonna is gonna diverge from the book then that's all right uh berserk i'm a big fan of berserk how would i do like, what would you do in the world of Berserk if you don't want to play Guts and his crew? You know, like, there's, like, Guts and Griffith. That's the big story happening. What you going to do on the side of that? Well, then if you... Then just become, like, a normal medieval fantasy kind of a kind of world. And if you earlier in the Berserk, it's barely any fantasy, too. So, so they're not IPs that are that great for for a role playing game in my opinion going to the rune say any sci-fi ip is a brain measuring contest yeah like the people that like sci-fi it's often they often devolve into that thing star wars is more fantasy so it doesn't it's not a, it's not as bad extreme so star wars fan nerds can get fed through transporter accident where they belong yeah Using popular setting would count as IP such as Greyhawk. Well, I was talking like more like a, because Greyhawk, yeah, is an IP, but it's a role playing IP, so it's designed for that. Same thing with Dragonlance and stuff like that. So I, that's not quite what uh, in LOR meant to uh, that I that I would uh, talk about here. I'm talking like talking taking something that is not from our role playing game and trying to make it a role playing game. Do do. Justin said the only game in Dune you could play would be a Jayadis blooding your Chris knife against the houses. If you were to play the, free, the Freeman, going in, yeah, if you it maybe it's during the Jihad. Maybe like you maybe you could play like during the, that's a good point. Maybe you could play like during the Jihad when Paul became Emperor. And but before he went insane, this kind of like part of the untold book. Uh, before he became, I don't know. Maybe maybe there's some room there, but you have to do like very limit the scope there. Uh, other other thing that are like chosen one. When you have an IP that is about a chosen one, not great for role playing game because what you're gonna do then again, it's always gonna be in the shadow. Or it's always going to be, uh, or are you going to make one player the chosen one? Or are you going to do, or every player is going to be a chosen one? You know, there's this thing too that to uh, to avoid there when you do IP game. Uh, IP, and that's mostly for video game where there's no character interaction outside of fighting. You know, there's no normal life, and that comes to Dark Soul. They did their ear. And Dark Soul is very cool, and there's like all this lore and stuff like that. But what do you do outside of combat? You know, the world is insane. Like, there's no normal life there. Like, the, the people are undead. So, you know, you don't have a job. You don't go eat. You don't. So, there's no. It's fight, fight, fight. Fight for your survival, or you fucking go holo. So, and in this game, they have like some mechanic for going holo. I'm, I'm not there yet. I, I know like they kind of interdicted it. But I haven't read them or do. Like that's why like I'm gonna might talk about it next week. There's already something I like in the in what they did here. Uh something I'm not too impressed with. But that that's the important thing. In a role-playing game, I think there need to be some kind of normal life that you get where you can role play some normal people you can interact with. If you're in a world where like it's it's all like a doom and gloom all the time. It's the same thing with the Warhammer, Warhammer 40k. I know they did made roleplay with it. I got like a Wrath and Glory here that I didn't check yet. But what do you do in uh, in downtime? What do you do? You know, some games are good for a war game because it's that's it's you know 
in the grim darkness of the future, there's only war. All right, and then make it a war game. When you try to make it a role-playing game, it does lead to some challenge. I'm not saying, and again, there are challenges. I'm not saying you cannot do it. But, uh, but it's not the easiest thing to do. You know, there's those considerations. Like, sometimes you have to, uh, you have to consider, like, oh, I like this IP. I want to make a I want to make a set a role playing game in this IP. Think about it for a second. It might not be the right, the best choice, the best course of action. Shite! I lost my connection there for a second. A few seconds. So I was saying there was there are world that uh, the IP that are good for role playing game, and those are the where the world is full of adventure, where you see and Star Wars is a good example of that because yeah we know that Han Solo before the story that in the just the original tr trilogy, we know that Han Solo was uh, a smuggler. So you know there's adventure there that is outside of the story that is being told there. There's this rebellion. There's the empire. They're uh, they're criminal. You know, there's a lot of path for adventure that are not just the main story that is being told. You know, the main story is being told, although it's in Star Wars and New Hope, it's a big story, but it's a uh, it's not the only story that can be told in that world. IP with a story limited in scope, also good. You know, Blade Runner. You could do uh, you you could do adventure in the world of Blade Runner and stuff like that, because we follow the story of Descartes. That's one cop doing one thing, you know, within this one scenario. It's not world. It's not like a world shattering event. It's not like it's it's very it's very it's very much more limited. Like you you see the world through this adventure. But this other thing going in the world, and the world at large doesn't really care about this, uh, this, those, this course of event. Justin said the role playing game is uh, acting out the rest stop in the middle of the night on the, the role playing game. Oh, you're talking about the Dune is <laughs> uh, acting out the rest stop in the middle of the night on the march. Oh no, about when the the ghost sip at the campfire, and I think is the entire role playing game. The rest up in the middle of the night on the march. Yeah, you're talking about like uh, those war games and stuff like that. Yeah, but it, like I said, you could do it, but there might not be a. Uh, you might not have like the most depth opportunity, deep opportunity for role playing game. Uh, some also some IP, you could adapt in role playing game, but would work better for one shot. Some of them are better or work well for a uh, long-term play, so it's also something to uh, consider. Some IP are going to be better for a small group. Some are going to be better for a large group. Uh, like I said, like in a, in a Blade Runner thing, I think that would work better with a smaller group. Something like Aliens uh, would, would work well for one shot, and then you can have a little bit of a larger group. So. And what makes a good IP game? If you want to, you have to do more than just include the superficial element of the IP. You know, you cannot just say, oh, it's an IP game. I'm going to get this character from the book and put it in my game. I'm going to take th those monsters and put them in my game. I think if you want to have like an IP game that hit the right spot, you have to go a little deeper than that. You have to consider uh, it's the it's the thing like with uh, between Call of Tulu and Fate of Tulu. You know what I mean? Those two games that are in a way IP game because they use the Lovecraft IP, you know, the which is not public domain, but whatever. They use the and one is just about getting the month putting the monster in. You know, oh Tulu is cute. I have a plushie of Tulu. You know, I talk about using not stop using Tulu before. <laughs> but that's fate of Tulu. Like, yeah, you can fight a Lovecraft and monster, but you're not defenseless. Like, it's not you have hope and you can win and you can kick. 
to Lou in the face and beat him. That's you just use the superficial element of the IP and uh, put them in your game. Hello, Shadow. Nice seeing you. In Call of, in Call of Tulu, where it is like you go insane, you, you oftentimes you're gonna die, you, you, it's likely that you're gonna lose and stuff like that. Already, you're touching more on something that is Lovecraftian, Lovecraftian. And if you, uh, if you, and like I said, that's something I said in my previous video, stop using Tulu because craft, Lovecraft was about like a unfamiliar, unfamiliarity, like a, the, the fear of the unknown. And now like everybody's familiar with the, with the Tulu monster. So again, like if you want to get the real, the real tone and the real feel for a Lovecraftian game, you should, you should move away from, but that's, I made a video about that. You can go watch it if you haven't watched it. Hello, insert name here. I was talking, I was thinking about this topic after watching Berserk. No one's going to enjoy playing one of the expendable. They're going to want to a gut like game, which means life might be hard, but not dead. Yeah, exactly. Like I uh, I don't like I love Berserk. I think it'd be very hard to adapt to a uh, continue, which is the kind of game most old schooler assigned to 5v play. No ultimate failure, they're just success and failure. Yeah. Shadow asks, I might have, I may have missed that this, but couldn't a decent DM just emulate IP? Yeah, I'll talk about a bit about that earlier. Like, uh, but that's something I'm thinking about now. Like, I, if you want to make a, an IP, just it's not just about putting the right monster, putting the right location, stuff like that. You know, like in the like, for example, like the Zoro game I talk about, they use a D6 uh, system from Western game, and and they made some mistake with it in my opinion. Because at some point they went a little too crunchy. Because that's the thing, you wouldn't do like a Zoro game with Pathfinder. You know, Zoro is supposed to be cinematic. It's about swashbuckling. It's supposed to go fast and stuff like that. So you have to, you have to consider the tone of uh, the the IP you're trying to emulate. Not every system is gonna fit uh, everything. And same thing if you want to do like a Sherlock Holmes game. You you wouldn't use a game that's super crunchy and focus on combat. You would take you would need to take a system, either make if you're designing your own game or pick if you're. But you need like a system that got some in, some more like an intrigue resolution, more social interaction. You know, like reading uh, people and stuff like that. There's something to uh, to consider, like the Dark Souls game here that I have here. They use the 5e mechanics, and I think it's unfortunate. They modified it quite a bit, they, so they, they 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 gained some point there. But Dark Soul is one of the game that would allow you to go a little more crunchy, because in the Dark Soul game, the Dark Soul games are all about like a, it's it's more like a weightier combat. It's it's a lot about resource management. You got the fast roll, the slow roll. You have to need to dodge a lot. Uh, not much randomness, but a lot of uh, you have to manage your greed. You know, sometimes like, oh, you're gonna close in on the enemy, hit him once, twice. If you hit a third time, you're gonna pay for it, and you're gonna die. It's gonna be a lot of like avoiding being hit, and a few hits is gonna kill you. So you know, you got those mechanics that are in the video game, and that doesn't scream 5e to me, you know. It's everything but 5e, not everything but 5e. Some other game would be worse, you know. I, I, you wouldn't do uh, something that's very rule light necessarily. But I think that's this is one of the rare IP that would have worked well with uh, a little bit of a more crunchy system. And like, if I want to do like a if I wanted to do like a Futurama game, like I used to quite love Futurama. No, I kind of like, a, I kind of soured a bit on it. But if I were to do like a Futurama RPG, for example, I wouldn't go with the crunchy system there necessarily. You would want like a, you wouldn't want a system maybe that has more randomness because there would be a lot of, uh, 
is the the character goofing off. You want things to go awry. You know, the characters try to do something. Maybe they're gonna succeed. Maybe they're gonna fail. Sometimes they're gonna succeed when it uh, when when it works well. Sometimes it's gonna fail. Uh, sometimes they're gonna succeed when they shouldn't have. I mean, sometimes they're gonna fail for something simple because it's a comedic. There's a comedic tone to it, and you're gonna have a, a system that like character advancement is not that important. So this is something to to consider about. If you want to do like a Dragon Ball system, then you need to have like this big fucking power curve. You need to have those mechanics for a lot of like pumping and stuff like that. Like the, the, just like combat should be a, a lot of that. Like you know, it's gonna be resolved quick, but before it's actually resolved, like there's like those rounds and rounds and like stacking up stuff. I don't know. I don't know how you would do it. I'm not a big fan of the Dragon Ball, so I, I don't know much about it. But yeah, so that's something I would say. You need. It's not just about like, oh, okay. There's a those kind of monster. Those kind. Of, there's an essence to an IP. You have to understand what the IP is about. You have to understand the symbolism behind the setting. You know, The Witcher, uh, the Witcher role playing game, a uh, video game. I mean, it's about it's a, it's a lot about like a, the time that are changing, the end of an era. You know, Geralt is one of the last Witcher there is. It's about being a professional, not a hero. He's getting paid for his work. He doesn't do it out of the kindness of his art most of the time. Or he pretends not to. Because there's also this thing about uh, keeping a moral code. Because Geralt got this morality to him, his, moral, his internal moral code. And maintaining your moral code, even when the. Even when the world around you despise you and treat you like shit in a way that's i think that's something that you kind of need to reflect if you want to do a witch a witcher feeling campaign and i mentioned before too like I, in the, in my witcher critique or review that they should have set the game earlier so everybody could be a witcher uh it would have changed the tone but you would have, like be more true to the to the books because now the Witcher fall in the oh Geralt is one of the last one is unique. Now you don't you don't you cannot have everybody be unique. So you can have one part, one player in the party be unique, kind of silly. Um, Dark Soul. What is Dark Soul like? If you do your game Dark Soul, it's just about like killing those big monster and uh, just uh, oh dying and rejecting. You know that's those are the superficial element. What is the substance of Dark Soul? What does Dark What is Dark Soul is about? Dark Soul is about having a purpose that keeps you going. It's yeah, like the greed and the risk management is a big part of Dark Soul too. That you have to, so you have to have this mechanic as well. You have to this like this push your luck mechanic, but you also have like to have like something to represent you going all over. Like what what is there something keeping you pushing? Keep that keep pushing you forward, um, or you're gonna get a, uh, or you're gonna get hollow because that's the, that's what's happening. Like people like are uh, undead, they keep coming back. You don't come back like a zombie, like a brainless zombie, a brain dead zombie. That comes over time when you lose your purpose. You don't have a reason to keep going on. You, there's nothing like uh, pushing you forward anymore, and this is when you get hollow, and that's a life lesson that is there. If you don't integrate that in the game, and also something in Dark Soul, like uh, they call you like the chosen undead, like oh they talk about the chosen undead, but you're not the chosen undead. You are an undead, and the action that you take makes you become the like you know there's the story about oh the chosen undead is gonna go ring the bell of awakening and stuff like that. When you start the game, you're not the chosen undead. You're just a undead. But the fact that you roll ring those bells makes you the chosen one. So there's also something about making your own fate, your own destiny. You're not fated to do something great. You do something great, that becomes your fate. So you have to you have to think about those things and you have to put those things in the game. Berserk is a lot about uh, <clears throat> dealing with trauma and the importance of co companionship, relying on other. And keep going 
despite the adversity, like struggling, you know, the struggler, that's the, that's the meme, you know, and our companionship makes your life easier. Makes so even in hard time, having good people around you that you like, that you care about is what's going to make you keep going. And what is make, what is going to make, uh, make life worth living in a way. If you do something with the uh, Lord of the Ring, Lord of the Rings is always going to be some kind of a epic kind of thing. You know, what are like a small story in Lord of the Ring doesn't really belong. Uh, just doing like, a, you know, you wouldn't do like, oh, you could do it, but it doesn't, you won't feel like Lord of the Ring. You're just in the, you're just in the, you're not in the substance of the IP then. If you just do like, Oh, we're in the Shire, and there's a thief, and uh, let's go get you know. Just like it's not the kind of story that Lord of the Ring tell. So you're you're, not, you're just in the in the appearance of Lord of the Ring, you're not in the substance. So those are things to consider: having the right power level, having the right lethality. Uh, is your are your action scene? Does your action scene need to be fast, which is often can, often the case when you try to adapt something that is a, a book or a movie scene? Because like in role playing game, you know, like I say, like oh, don't use Pathfinder to do this. You know, Pathfinder is a, is a crunchier system. I use this example. There's wars, but I use this example. And in combat, in movies, and in books, action is re is usually resolved pretty quick. So. Maybe that's why like, there's a lot of a uh, game and movie goes with something like Savage World or, stuff, or some stuff like that. And that's why, like I said, Dark Soul is kind of a, one of the that could afford to have like a slower uh, combat. Uh, and do you want to, you know, some IP too are gonna have uh, the character take a lot of punishment, so then you can go with a system with hit point and stuff like that. Some IP are gonna have. You get shot, you get hit once, you fucking die. You know, you, you wouldn't do like a a hit point system on a game with like um like Star Trek where you get shot with the, the phaser and you die. So those are the things to consider. And the role of randomness. Do you need a lot of randomness in your game, or do you need something that is uh, you know more control randomness do you want a system that is class based or skill based uh that's something also that bothered me with the dark soul game dark soul is a is a is a is not a class based game but they pick 5e and they made it class based you know that's a mistake in, in dark soul you do pick a class at the start but that's only like your starting stat you can become whatever you want when you start it and if you're if you're a true guy you you uh, you just play deprived or uh, wretched. And also if you, like if you the IP you wanna if you the game system you wanna pick, does it have the proper system that are relevant to the IP? Like I mentioned earlier, like a Sherlock Holmes game. If you wanted to do that, do you don't pick a game that is all about combat, you pick a game that has some social mechanic. You would need that. Magic and technology. The right uh, feeling for that, the right power level. Let's see what the chat is saying. I think I'm, I'm back a bit. I I went on a on a run there. Jacobite Wiseman said, "What does IP stand in this context? Oh, intellectual property. Sorry if I uh, sorry if I haven't been clear. I should have like started that. Damn it." Justin said, "Really? I'm pretty sure I'm the magnificent one." Said the being of the chat. You were the first one to say it, so. Uh, Wait, I lost. Uh, I lost quite a bit. Man, I need to scroll back up. Hello, uh, Full Metal Dragon. Session zero. We all sit around and watch a movie. Well, that could be it. You or you play the movie while you uh, while you discuss it. Maybe the One Ring TTRPG plays you between the Hobbit and the trilogy, and the core book doesn't tell you what the problems are. A later source book describes a city and problems that plague that area. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Like when you have like those small story, they don't feel like Lord of the Ring. You know, they don't have the right feel, in my opinion. Lord of the Ring, you need to do something epic. You need to do something big. 
Uh, I guess the Abir was a smaller story of just like those criminal. So maybe it can work, but it's a lot of the ring is so overshadowing all this that, uh, and even like the Smer the Smerillion, the Smeril uh, How do you pronounce that? Angar say, look at everyone that came to watch the show just to see me. <laughs> the honor and intrigue RPG is great swatch bustling RPG, which is an adaptation of Barbarian of Lemuria system. Oh, I never I heard of a Barbarian of Lemuria. Actually, I have Barbarian of Lemuria. And yeah, this one like is kind of a system that kind of get out of the way. Aspect-based system. So you just need fear and skill-based system with permadeath rules. I'm not sure what is uh, what is that referring to. Uh, I lost the context. Possibly the total party skill system. The total party skill system is a functional skills uh, skill system. Uh, much very much show a system that gets out of the way. Uh, so much rules light. So um, that could work for that could work for a lot actually. Yeah, it's very adaptable. Tune. Uh, Toon is goofier than what Futurama would go. I think you were you were saying that when I was talking about Futurama. It's goofier than what Futurama would go. But if you want to do tunes, that's the system for it. Guardian of the Rune said, my life hangs on your every word on Gar. Yeah. A lot of uh, entertainment IP don't fit old school role playing because the hero doesn't perish, just succeed or fail. Yeah. Uh... And that's something you can do as well. You can, you could have like some some old school. A lot of entertainment IP don't fit the old school role playing game. Uh, you can make like failure like have a dire consequence, and there's still some uh, even in old like in Star Trek and the old Star Trek like uh, the first security officer at some point should just, should just fucking die in the first season. Is that, isn't the first season? I think it was the first season. Uh, I forgot her name. The one that was always like talking about the rape gang, Tasha. Was it Tasha her name? As long as it's over nine thousand, you're okay. That's for the, the the Dragon Ball game, and that's the thing that you know that meme would kind of need to be in the Dragon Ball game. I guess like you need to have like, this power level that you can raise and something that is measurable and that kind of exists in the world. It's a bit silly, but. Guardian of the Rune, Ongar said that Guardian of the Rune, that just uh, the way it should be, but he all hanging on his own, every word. What does IP? That, okay, and I'm catching up. Justin said, really, I'm pretty sure that I'm the manifest. Well, everybody's just talking to themselves. IP is your recent intellectual property, and it does in this context. Yeah, sound almost worse than hell. Intellectual property it does. <laughs> A media property that is not related in RPG in this context. Fate is the thing you do, not the thing you will do. Yeah, sound like a physical proverb in the making. Yeah, that's it. you make your own fate. You know, it's like a uh, Sarah Connor writing on the table. No fate, but what we do. Oh, hey, it will nerd yogurt. Yeah. Jacobite wise man say one thing you haven't talked about is when is adventuring warranted and when it's not for is not worth it. For example, you don't go on a dangerous quest to save a pet shop from goblins when rationals in danger. That's also like a based on the like like I said like if you do like a like I mentioned like Futurama if you have to do like a Futurama IP or Futurama game, you don't go on adventure, you go on delivery. And on the delivery adventure happen because you screw up. So there's also something that to consider that, like how do adventure come about? It's also exactly a consideration. Like in if you do a Star Trek game, you go on adventure because you're exploring and you want to see the different world, and then you come someplace and that's a situation that you go fuck up. So uh, the way that you uh, the the way that you approach adventure is also important based on the catechism saying unnecessary daring is sin yeah but when you when you're role playing you uh you're not necessarily you're not receiving role playing good catholic people 
and so names uh, say to uh, Jacob Wiseman, one way you could explain this is that adventure tend to be people who are for extreme risk taking. Yeah, exactly. When you play adventurer, or usually not normal people, drill seeker, they're like they're always kind of deranged a bit. Guardian Rune say Warhammer Fantasy is a great IP, not just for fans of lore, but also people who LARP as a musketeer. It has a very authentic Renaissance world. I like uh, Warhammer Fantasy quite a bit. I like the world. Uh, I like the, the game is pretty decent as well. I know like Ongar has been playing that with his brother. I hate to uh, step on your toes, but I got to do my prepper show in five minutes. Have fun, man. I'm going to run. Have, uh, have fun. And to all you, you all in the foo ny paper and see you all in the foo in the f u n y paper i got lost there hello tyler flames on b say tyler i heard i think i heard good thing about the dishonored 2d20 system i didn't even know i'm not aware about this one 2d20 is it like the is it like the same as the conan 2d20 by modifius conan 2d conan 2d20 is good I like Conan 2D20 nailed it. That's that would be like a good example of a IP game. They nailed it because like uh it's kind of fast and all world write his action scene pretty fast. It, like they it is it doesn't like a linger. And it's brutal, and you got this momentum that build up, like the situation, the tension increase mm -hmm. one way or the other. I think Conan 2D20 got the feeling right. And that's the thing too, when they did like uh, they tried to do the 2D20 system for Star Trek. Not the same, not the same deal. Not not the good like it's a good system for Conan. Not so great for uh for, for Star Trek. You know, at some point we need to consider that as well. I'm writing my own system with turned down. And I mentioned Dark Soul, I mentioned Berserk in the stream a lot. There are two IP I like a lot, and there is a lot of influence in my own system from those IP, but I'm not doing a Dark Soul game, I'm not doing a, a Berserk game, but I do have like you could play in those kind of like play because like I have like a there's a lot of like uh, risk management and uh, push your luck kind of thing, and and like I do have this uh, the spirit mechanic where being on the on the campfire and singing song is gonna raise your spirit. That's gonna help you perform more, you know. So having like then having somebody that can play some music, like I would say a bard, it's a classless system, but I, there's a point to it other than just like being horny because it's going to raise your spirit at the end of the day when you're just relaxing when you're out of danger sing some song tell some joke have a good meal have a feast having somebody that can cook that's good to have in your adventure party because you're going to eat well you're going to get more spirit but uh um, what i was saying about that but yeah, but I wouldn't do like now, like, and I said also after like, Winter Down, uh, when I do like, um, probably want to do like a biker game, I wouldn't use a system for Winter Down for a biker game because it's a very different feel I'm trying to achieve. It's a very different game I, I want to make. Um, Tyler say, oh, Abe, at uh, talking about game, has been reviewing the Terminator game. Speaking of, it seems cool. I didn't like that's also someone I didn't know they were making. It's official, Mr. Uh, Mr. Max mostly identify with female character Sarah Connor. Yeah, she's a uh, the goat. No, I, I need a, I would need a wife like that though. I like the idea of going on two different time period when you die. Oh, is that in the Terminator? Oh, that's interesting. Full Metal Dragon said the one thing that Dark Soul RPG does well is that it uses souls for currency, a kingdom for its XP system, and you do lose your soul upon character dying. Yeah, that that I, I'm glad they did, but because that that's kind of like central to Dark Soul, but it's still like it's still some kind of like higher level. Like it's you know it's people like it's easy to access. Oh, what is Dark Soul about? Oh, you collect souls and you level up with those souls. You buy equipment with those souls. When you die, you lose the soul. I don't think they do the soul run, but you know, it doesn't go like the 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 level under that of like, what is the dark soul actually about? You know, what what is the what is that kind of going the philosophy kind of thing? I like maybe maybe I think too much about those kind of thing. Sarah Connor is one of the best written female character in modern film, especially in the first movie. What even the second one too? Because there's continuation in the character after the second movie, like. Dark Fate of Terminator. I, I don't know. I haven't seen those movies. I assume it's not good. Flames on Beast. And then uh, there's whatever the hell she turned into in the last movie. Exactly. That's what I was saying. 
Runecairn does Dark Souls as an RPG way better than the actual Dark Souls RPG in me, in my opinion. I never heard Runecairn. Maybe I should uh, look at this one. Winter Dawn do Dark Souls better than the, the Dark Souls RPG. <laughs> Hello, Flady. Justin, uh, Nerdy Ogar say to Justin, I think uh, John Wick would disagree with you on saving the pet store from the goblins. I don't know. He was his dog, you know. He wasn't just a dog. I never look at the uh, Rune Kern, but 5e is a bad fit. Yeah. I think it's the same engine. Rune Kern and 5e. Dark Soul is the perfect example for forcing an IP into the wrong system for the sake of trying to get more sale. I'll talk about a, uh, a bit uh, Dark Soul RPG more next week. Yeah, it makes absolutely no sense to put into the system where it's infamously difficult to die. Yeah, exactly. You should also have diplomacy as a skill as well as fighting. That way, not every encounter is just skill. Yeah, depending, like, especially if you do a Star Trek and stuff like that, like, depending on the, depending on the system, you know, like, if you do, like, a Berserk game, you don't really need diplomacy. That's not going to happen. There's no diplomacy there to be have, you know. You get, like, the only diplomacy is get out of my way, I'm going to fucking kill you. You know, that's, that's how, but it depends on the game. I should have uh, stayed more on top of the common. Nerdy Ogar says, Flames on B. I see you are Sarah Connor and raise you, you are replay. <laughs> Up there too. Yeah, replay is a great character as well. Insert name say, name, name here. Say, if a noteworthy percent of the inspiration of your game is Berserk and Dark, Dark Souls, it's going to be a grim dark. It's going to be grim dark, I assume. Uh, I don't. The game, I'm, I'm making a, a game system. I'm not really like, a, there's kind of an implied setting, but I'm not going very deep in the setting. So you can make it. Like I, I think that rules should inform setting, but I don't. I'm, I don't put fluff. I don't put anything like that. So you make your own setting with the game, but because of the, the way the rules are designed, you know, if somebody like grab you with a dagger and stab you, you'll most likely die. It's it, it's very little, little, and you have to manage your 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 spirit and stuff like that. You can get your character can get demoralized. And not be able to do shit, you know, their mechanic or just tire and stuff like that. So it's not, it's not a super heroic game. It's fairly mundane. Uh, and because like the Dark Souls inspiration is a lot of like about setup. Uh, you don't like. It's not like you know you don't do the fight like it 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 and you chip away at the bag of hit point. You try to set up a good hit, and then you kill the guy. Or in 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 a few blow, you know what I mean. So that that's what that's why like a lot of the inspiration from Dark Soul uh, kind of come. Dark Souls should have be fast paced, reaction based, and being and being worn down. No, I disagree with that. I think like Dark Soul could have been, like I said, could have been like a more crunchy system and slow down because. Uh, because Dark Souls is all about like this this set setting up, you know. You have to learn the pattern of the boss, and you have to set yourself up for an attack. Uh, you know, in in Dark Soul, the at, the actual attack and stuff like that. Well, the attack kind of comes slow by video game standard because of telegraphing and stuff like that. But a lot of the time in Dark Soul, you wait for the right moment to strike. You don't. You don't. If you just go and strike, 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 you're gonna die. A lot of it is about waiting the right moment, and that's that's part of saying like when I'm saying like uh, having the right feeling, understanding what the game is about, and getting the right feeling. That's part of it, you know. Be, like because you you can think like it's about oh you, you need to be to have the good reflex and stuff like that. Yes, that's true, but it's a thinking man's game. You need to have the figure out the right time to strike, the right opportunity to strike. So uh, this kind of mistake like people do make like when they 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 don't. They just look at the first the first level, the first layer. The short TV series, the Sarah Connor Chronicle, is a direct direct sequel to T two. It's actually quite good. I had a, I used to have a roommate that was quite into it. I never I never I never seen anything of it. I see you playing in Raise You, Cameron Phillips. I don't know who Cameron Phillips is. Oh, sorry, it was Jacob Wiseman that said that. Oh, it's okay. Don't worry about it. What if you're playing a Griffith type character? Use diplomacy to build your mercenary band and hide all the horrific things you're doing in the background. You see, that's a 
the dichotomy between Griffith and, and, and Guts is interesting because like Griffith uses people, but he doesn't like people in a way that he, you know, he say he doesn't see them as his equal, doesn't see them as his companion or as his friend because they're just following his dream. They're there to support him. Berserk uh, Guts doesn't uh, doesn't like people, but he learns to like people and he care about them. The people he likes, when they when they manage to go through his crust, he truly care about them. And he sacrificed himself a lot to help it. So there's, this is a big team in the, in the, in Berserk. So that's something I think should be reflected in some way if you want to do if you want to represent that IP. Uh, but I, again, I say I don't think it's the best IP to uh, to adapt uh, in a role playing game. Uh, Justin said to Jagger, I only recognize the, ter the three Terminator installment, that being one, two, and the TV series. Also, the TV series would be Sarah Connor Chronicle. So I guess maybe it was good. You should have a one, two page setting Bible for all things work in the implied setting, even if you will never publish it. It's a, it's good for consistency. Oh, I do have that. I do have, uh, I do have that. But I don't, like, I, because at some point when I started writing, at some point I did have a writing, a setting, but I decided to uh, take it out. Uh, because I want to keep things more concise and I want people to make their own and I want people to understand to make their own setting understanding what the mechanics tell them the setting should be this is true yeah for the Guardian of the Runes say some IP may not be good for fit for a TTRPG I think a uh, thing game with only combat doesn't make a good TTRPG but can make a good board game yeah that's something that's uh, absolutely something that should be considered something like yeah that doesn't work for the that doesn't work for role playing game would work with, would great for us for a, for a video for a board game yeah or if you're doing like not a video game ip but you're doing like a book or a movie could work well for well books and movie always kind of have a story otherwise there nobody cares about them so i guess maybe it's easier they're easier to fit in a in a role playing game but uh <clears throat> But if you try to adapt a video game, not every video game would do a good role-playing game. But now, who the fuck's know nowadays? Like, Asbro announced that they want to make a movie about Uno and Hungry Hungry Hippo. So, whatever. <laughs> you know, if the world isn't uh, as engaging as the character story, exactly. Yeah, for sure. Cameron Phillips was a Terminator unit in the Sarah Connor Chronicle. Oh, I know, like, I know nothing about it. Your setting Bible is invited by my setting Koran. Koran. People are free to choose. <laughs> <laughs> like you, you take the Bible and you rip uh, seven books out of it. That, uh, that's why it's a uh, extraction. That, uh, oh, extraction, a terrible movie. I haven't seen extraction, but I know that the, uh, I know that uh, Victor Gorchev, I think Victor Gorchev liked it. I think he mentioned that before. That's the only known, I think. Anyway, that's uh, what I, bought, I wanted to talk about. I'm going to wrap this up. Uh, Justin said, you're sitting, Koran is invited by my flamethrower. <laughs> oh, Yagar say, I see you're sitting, Koran, and we raised by you by 38 volume setting of Talmud. <laughs> Insert name is saying, you no know, doubt, God's willingness to uh, personally sacrifice outside uh, oneself for Griffith is only comparable generally to the epic tales that motivate his romantic no, no more. Well, yeah, that's a, that's another topic. Uh, like having like male friendship that is not seen as almost like of, of some gay kind of love nowadays is problematic. Like, I, it fucking annoys me. You cannot have like two characters that are like, oh, Simon Fredo were lover. Fuck you. <laughs> it's like, Stop that. Anyway, that's a different topic. Maybe for another day. Maybe for another channel. <laughs> but it fucking annoys me. Yeah. Anyway, so that's what I, I, I wanted to say about like the main point I wanted to make in this video. And I know like I've uh, drifted a lot. Is like if you want to adapt an IP to uh, to a to a RPG, well, first think if the if it's a proper IP to uh, if it's a proper IP to adapt if it fits. The setting of RP, the, the the context of RPG, then consider the not just the superficial element 
of the of the IP, but ask yourself about a little deeper, like the essence of the IP, the philosophical ramification. What is the and if you want to adapt an IP to a to a role playing game, you probably it's probably an IP that you care about. So there's probably something at it that goes a little deeper. Sometimes, like we like those things, we don't uh, and we don't really think about why. It's just oh, it's just cool. Usually, it's because there's probably like a little more depth there. So look at that. You look at the depth. Look at the look at the essence of the IP and look at uh, and try to find a system that fits that. You know what I mean? Just just don't say don't just don't use your favorite system that you used to with your favorite IP that you like. You know they might not be a good match. I got a good match. So that's what I want to talk about. I'm certainly going to talk a little more about IP game. Uh, one in, in particular, because I'm going to talk about Dark Soul next week. Uh, in the meantime, everybody have a good weekend. What is that? Uh, Yager did a better job than me. I wish I had thought of it. Oh, yeah. with the <laughs> Yeah. Splinter is gay now. Is that a thing? And nothing is sacred anymore. So fucking tiresome. Have a good weekend, everybody. I'll see you back on uh, Tuesday, I guess. I might do a little stream this weekend, uh, impromptu on, maybe on, maybe Saturday night or something like that. Uh, keep your eye peeled. Uh, have a good day, everyone. Uh, see you. Ciao.